Oh, I found a toy. I'm currently inside of one of the worst hoarder houses I've ever seen or been inside of. And this video is gonna require your assistance. To find out how you can help, continue watching. Do you remember this location? This location of the shockingly indescribable abandoned hoarder house that I filmed approximately one year ago, and it's a place I won't ever forget. Not only does this house have one of the worst bathrooms I've ever seen, but it's one of the most extreme cases of hoarding I've ever come across. On my first visit here, I not only explored the entire house, but also the property surrounding the house. And needless to say, I was blown away by what I seen. And that's where I could use your help. When I head inside, I'm going to be showing more of the items in closer detail. I obviously won't be able to show you every item, but what you do see, I want you to pay close attention to because at the end of the video, I want you to share your thoughts on what you think the people were like who once lived here. Now, before we head inside, I just want to touch on a few more things. I know I'm doing a lot of talking right now, but I want to get everything out of the way before we dive into the items. First off, this is going to be a lengthier video because I'm going to be going through more of the items taking my time showing you more of the details of this home. Secondly, what we know so far, based on my first visit here, is most likely one of the occupants here either owned or worked at a bowling alley. The reason we could conclude that is because there's multiple things related to bowling alley here. There's bowling alley chairs, a bowling ball machine up in the woods, bowling pins, and numerous advertisements on the inside for different bowling lanes, some of which are still in operation, some are not. The second thing is that this place has lots of toys. And that's where there was a lot of speculation in my first video. People shared thoughts about either the toys being the homeowner's kids that lived here, the grandkids that came to visit, or maybe foster kids that were here and the foster kids were removed from the home based on the, on the conditions. Obviously, I don't have any details of that, but based on what you do see between the first video, more importantly, this video, when it comes to the toys, especially the, the dates of them from the era that they're from, you can maybe come up with your own conclusion or idea as to who you think played with those toys. The children of the homeowners, the grandkids if they came to visit, or were foster kids here? Up to you to decide. I'm not sure if we're gonna look at the contents outside the house just because we've seen them already for the most part. I certainly could spend more time on them today. But first, let's see how things go on the inside, see how long it takes because I'm excited to get in there and check things out and to share them with you. So if you're ready to see what's behind this door, all you need to do is come along with me. We're inside now and definitely smells worse than it did last time. And it's significantly colder in here. It's about 50 degrees outside. It feels like around 40 degrees in here. We're starting off in the kitchen. And the good thing about this video is that we're gonna see things in better clarity, better detail based on my new camera, which is gonna do significantly better in conditions like this. I probably won't have to use a flashlight all that much, but let's just uh, start randomly right here. bar opener set and more bowling memorabilia south side bowl idle hour lanes those are still in business but they are named uh, I think idle hour south now maybe the south side bowl changes their name pie crust is there a date on this Better if used by January 31st, 2012. 
So that's been here even before then. Home style gravy. It doesn't open. Jammed up in there. I think those are for water, transporting water. Dishes, cups and bowls. Combination, two prong outlet, the switch. I believe this had oil heat from what I remember and steam radiators. Last time I was here, I didn't touch the fridge, but I know many of you wanted to see what was inside, so I will open that up and share it. <laughs> I'm probably gonna regret it, but I will share it. Lifestyles paper there. Some other random newspapers. That uh, sink area is just kind of sinking down on itself. I don't know if I want to stand over there, so I'm probably going to avoid that particular area. And that was the only light source right there for the ceiling and one on the wall over there. They do have the circular fluorescent bulb. But let's check out that fridge. Climbing over stuff here. USBC, United States Bowling Congress. And on top, some Fruit Loops and Cocoa Puffs. All right, check the freezer first. Oh man. Yeah, uh, let's close that. Can't imagine the fridge is gonna be any better. Space heaters. And a coffee maker. Oh God, let's get some light on this. Oh, I'm avoiding breathing through my nose right now. If I smell it, I might gag and won't be good. There's yogurt in there, grape jelly, eggs, some celery and vegetables that are already decomposed and gone completely. Yeah, it's pretty much as bad as I thought it would be. And now there's little things flying around here. And right next to us, <clears throat> excuse me, is one of the radiators, as I mentioned, for the heat source. Steam heat, oil burner. Ugh. It's just, a lot of it is just junk and garbage, but they just didn't want to get rid of anything. For the paper, December 14th, 2012. I don't know if anyone's been here since I was here last, but I do know some things are still in the same place, like this old pogo stick right here. I remember that was the first time I ever saw one like that. There's some paints down there, wine jugs, Tons of plastic bags, some 45 records, Atlantic records, Foreigner. Uh, who else here? Peter Pan, Little Red Caboose. The Sweet. We Are Happy Together, BJ Thomas. Just Good Friends, The Height and Heisten Band. I want to see what's in this tub right here. Uh, more pots and pans. They didn't have a whole lot of storage in here and that's already filled with basically pots and pans. One of the toys right there, dragon. Yeah, so I'm not going beyond this spot here. Sink is still there, loaded up with Everything of the sorts has the external sprayer for washing out the pans and the plates. Does have PVC piping as the drainage. A 
Lord of the Rings up there, glass goblet. Egg wave, microwave, egg maker. I do see some food processors. Probably from the 80s or 90s. I don't know when they came out, but they look really dated. There's at least two or three of them. Some of the old hand mixers or blenders that you stick the mixing wands into the slots and mix it by hand for like mashing potatoes and stuff. Now the stove is beyond, <laughs> beyond its prime. Let's see if there's anything inside here. Um, yeah, there's some stuff in here. That one, that pan has uh, some liquid and some chunks in there. I don't even want to know what that is. Rival 20 quart oven roaster. That's a hot plate right there. Electric hot plate. Pile of garbage here. Plastics, cardboard. That's going to be the theme throughout this house. They definitely did not get rid of cardboard. More importantly, um, or more specifically, plastics. We're going to see numerous things of plastics. There's some signs there for uh, stickers for cosmic bowling. Spices. It's like a bread box right there. that is oh, I don't need the whole thing <coughs> all right it even says bread on there still someone sand art up here coca-cola bottle and look at the peeling paint. I think we covered the kitchen pretty well. Not really much else to see, just garbage and things that aren't really worth checking out. So I guess we're gonna do the room. Let's see, let's go behind us in that direction. Once we do all the first floor, we're going to do opposite of last time. We're going to go down to the basement and then we're going to go upstairs last, including the attic. So there's a lot to see in this house, but we're doing one room at a time, doing our best to document it. But again, make sure you pay attention to what you see so you can tell me at the comment section at the end of the video what you think the people were like who once lived here. Well, the one good thing is that there's no melting snow like there was last time because there was water dripping in that room through the roof, through the attic, through the second floor, into this floor, this room here, and there was a garbage tote collecting the water. And that floor I know is not stable, nor is the one above it, so I won't be going too far into that room. But for right here, let's kind of get back into checking things out. There's a little bunny, bunny figurine. Grade value for daylight compact fluorescent bulbs, glow sticks, electric shave, record player, and then combination record player, tape player, radio with equalizer. That screams. Probably 90s, right? I would think. And then we do have all these drawers basically full of VHS tapes. Most of them are blanks that are taped on. There's Learning Plurals, Columbo, 007, the spy who loved me. I thought it said the spy who shagged me like Austin Powers. 
Hell's Brigade, Stunt Busters, Rudolph, American Graffiti. Definitely things, content, movies for all ages, for adults and children. Patton, Ben-Hur, Spartacus. Bud Light cans, chips, Friskies, indoor delights, cat treats, cat food bags. So definitely had some animals. Now there's part of a, a gaming set. I know my friend Jake, Mr. Smithnet would appreciate this. This is driving. Is that for Atari? Yeah, it's missing the cover over that, but I remember this control. I had an Atari as a little kid. That might be Atari. If not, certainly fill me in as to what that is. The other thing I forgot to mention too is that we know this house had no running water in its last years here. That's based on all the plastic containers, the water jugs, specifically the bathroom. <laughs> they didn't have water to flush the toilet. We'll see as to how bad that is again. Also, probably no heat in later years too. They probably never got the, the tank filled with oil because there is numerous um, kerosene heaters, both inside and outside. So they only had portable heat sources. Even in the kitchen, we saw the space heaters. So no running water, as far as we know, no heat for the house. So essentially they didn't have to worry about pipes freezing so much but they only had heat in certain rooms with either space or kerosene heaters. So it seems like the only utility they had was electricity as far as we know. Now this I call the little office area. There's a desk here, old wooden desk. There's a flip phone there. There is a computer tower there against the wall. Filing cabinet, a trunk standing up on end. This is Virgin Mobile. I bet some of you probably had this phone. Uh, these drawers do not want to open. They may not even open. Actually, I think they do, but I think it's so compressed on itself that they don't want to open. That doesn't want to open. No, they don't want to open. And I'm not about to break it just to get inside of it. Ocean Potion Instant Burn Relief. There's the computer tower there. Keyboard right there. It's a Dell. I remember a lot of people commented on this piece of furniture here. It's basically a seat and coat or hat rack basically allows you to get ready all in one spot. You can sit down to tie your shoes and you can hang your hats, gloves, coats, whatever you want on the hooks. There's a mirror there to make sure you're looking all dapper before you leave the house. And that was also my first time seeing that piece of furniture. Another radiator. It's a chair right there and this is a type of cabinet which is heavily caked in mold let's see if we can get a glimpse inside oh well the door door ripped right off and this is the games you recognize any of these probe backgammon Pods, the futuristic game of light and sounds. Shoots and ladders. Funny bones. This is like a little blast in the past right here. I feel bad that the door ripped off, but it's beyond saving at this point. And that is just documents. And Oh, there's a Barbie doll. And some books. All right, this room, the office room I'm calling it, completed. 
I'm satisfied with what we saw. Betty Crocker books. Everyday process. Still in the wrapper, it's a CD. And I say wrapper, no pun intended. I think it's a rap artist, but it's in the cellophane wrapper. Oh, I remember, yeah, the 90s style furniture, the design on it. Yeah, this room is a mess. That area I will not go into, step onto because of that. Eventually that second floor is gonna cave down into the first floor and that room is also loaded. So there's a lot of weight in that room pressing down on those joists and timbers and planks of wood. So it's only a matter of time that is gonna come crashing down. The big main beam right there is actually split diagonally. So actually a few of them are. So there's no main supports. I think at this point, it's just termites holding hands, keeping that together. And that's a, a joke from the movie Funny Farm. Let's see if I could get in just a little bit here. Bookshelf with encyclopedias. It says everybody's encyclopedia. That is cat tree containers full of sewing materials, spools of string and needles. I think those are the oil lanterns, right? You can see the trim of the wallpaper up there too. Coke products, tons of Coke and Sprite. Definitely some nice pieces of furniture at one time. They're, most of them are beyond being salvaged at this point, but they did have some nice and unique pieces. is a TV right there, a little box TV, a little corner table. TV was probably right in there. I remember these uh, pieces of furniture too, like that table, how the door opens up like that underneath it. I do remember that, seeing that in other houses or maybe even had it in my own family at one time. This is where they basically did their TV watching. Sat on the couch here. Someone sat in the chair. Probably someone elderly, maybe bad of seeing or hearing. They usually have the closest spot to the television. And there's a VCR right there as well. But that's as far as I'm going, <coughs> excuse me, in this room. It's not worth the risk to go any further. So now we're going to go back through the kitchen and head into that room. Also, if you could do me a favor, give me some feedback on how I'm doing with this video as far as my return visit here, showing things in more detail. If you're definitely appreciating it, let me know. Back in the kitchen, and now we're gonna go into the last room here, I believe, on the main floor. And again, this paint is just hanging on by nothing, basically. This is one of the worst rooms, not the worst. The worst one is upstairs. This is one of the worst though. And this is our solid confirmation that they were out of water using water jugs. These are all water jugs, gallons of water. And they probably refilled them outside either when it rained, you know, from the rain gutters, maybe they had an on-spot, on-site well, which I doubt thinking back now, I don't remember seeing one. But if they had one, they wouldn't be running out of water. So that doesn't make sense. So probably they were just collecting water and purchasing jugs of water for drinking, washing dishes, probably taking a sponge bath because they didn't take showers or baths here, as we'll find out. 258-piece art set. Oh, look at that bougie dress right there. Complete with shoulder pads. Remember those, ladies? The shoulder pads? Just a heap of material here. Some more of this 90s retro furniture. It's like that graphic look to it. 
very hard navigating here too because everything is just piled upon each other. Oh, I see something that we saw outside. Let me get over here. Oh, outside, remember? We saw this. Oh, it's stuck to a, a toy. Hang on. So people were curious if there was film left in these cameras. This one may have film in it. The other one outside does not. It's a Fuji film. The unique thing, this is a waterproof camera up to 35 feet deep. Really older, earlier model. It's extra 800. There might be film in this one. And I just dropped it. It does show there's 21 exposures remaining. So it might be a brand new thing of film. It might be a few photos on here. Got the organ here, more books, costume jewelry. Oh, wow. That is just full of costume jewelry and just watches. I don't think it's anything of value, just luxury costume jewelry. Let's see, GPX cassette player. It's like a Walkman. Here's another one. Voice activated system. That's pretty neat. Reminds me of uh, Kevin McAllister's, what was that, Talkboy or something from Home Alone? Here's Mount Jugmore. More books there. This room is hard to really get any further into. Oh, in the corner there, I do see... Let me get closer. I'll give you a better look at it. I'm literally having to step on these piles. Ugh. And I'm standing on top of whatever it is here. There's a one-touch scanner. Yeah, so right there in the corner is a 20-pound propane tank and uh, well, there's actually two tanks here and a heating element. So again, more portable heat to heat specific rooms. So they had everything from kerosene heaters, electric space heaters, to these propane tank heaters as well. It's an IBM monitor, computer towers, IBM. There's three of them here. Aptiva or Aptiva, more cassettes, Canon printer. You can only imagine what's on the hard drives of these computers. Yeah, this is uh, pretty nuts. And I am literally standing just inches from the top here because I'm standing on probably three to four feet of material here. So this room I think is completed. As far as I know, the whole first floor is completed. That means we're gonna go down to the basement. So if you're ready, let's continue. Here's our basement access. Now there is something interesting that I found here last time and I'm gonna kind of give you a hint at it right now. You see that? There's daylight coming through. That's because there is doors right there. And at the time, I didn't know where those doors went to. They do just go outside. I will show you confirmation of that once we are back outside. That was basically access to the basement to get items inside, larger items. So they had access on the side of the house which would have entered right there. Obviously those shelves wouldn't be there, but that is basically outside access or inside access to the basement from the outside. It's almost like there's little hidden cubbies here and stuff. People make mention too, these old houses that 
People probably hoard money in containers like coffee cans, maybe shoe boxes. This is giving people under the stairs vibes. If you ever seen that movie, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Okay. Safely got down here. Christmas decoration and a little sleigh. I guess this would be considered their pantry. Price chopper of pork and beans. Let's see if we can find a date on any of this. It's heavily corroded and rusty. That's because it's so close to the elements right there. Moisture easily gets inside. January 2013. 11 years old for the expiration date. Now the basement is pretty dark. I do have a better light source with me, so I'm going to switch to that and then we'll continue. All right, that's a bit better. First thing we're greeted upon is a artificial Christmas tree and a shop light. Electrical box. So, as I mentioned, this is how they got stuff like this down here, the washing machine, through that outside access. I'm not standing on the true bottom or floor because it's just littered with things. It's nearly impossible to even see the floor. It is something else down here, though, I'll tell you that. It's amazing how many things they just didn't want to get rid of. Some practical, most of it not. Oh, there's a dryer right there, too, that yellow color right there. There's some fly strips down here. I need to safely navigate. So that's looking at the stairs right there. And this is the most likely gentleman's shop area. There's a big tub. It is wheeling. Patent something 154226. That wash tub. Electrical components. There's some Newer outlets, the three prong outlets, light fixture switches. I'm not gonna dig into that. I don't wanna disturb, have something fall on me, cut myself open, so I'm just gonna observe rather than dive into that. Oh, this floor is nasty. It's like partially frozen too. So here is the I believe the oil furnace, really, really rusted. I can smell oil down here. I know there's a tank down here somewhere. There's a room right there and there's a window to the outside, which we did look into earlier. Okay, yep, there's the oil tank back there. Not sure if we got back there last time. We'll see if we could do that. I'm we'll actually do it right now since we're here. I don't know if I came in this room last time. Two oil tanks, more kerosene heaters, pair of boots right there hanging. It's actually a lot of shoes and boots. Old box fan, metal frame box fan. The tank on the left closest to the wall is leaking. It's all sludged up with oil there. Oh, there's a adult, I guess you want to call it a potty chair. You can see the frame where the insert of the plastic toilet tub would go. A lot of puzzles here, books. 
Uh, this is another washing machine right here. Older one. And just heaps of stuff. Just I'm just gonna call it that stuff. The little workbench here is barely hanging on. It's so heavily piled up with stuff. There's a press of sorts. A lot of this stuff seems like it's been underwater. It probably could have been. It was like a fresh piece of poop right there. <laughs> so some, oh, something's been feeding down here. There's a, a dead mouse and some fur. So that something's coming down here to feed. Maybe cats. Probably cats. It looks like cat poo. And here's some really, really rusty three rail Lionel track. A lot of track there, but I don't think it could even be saved. It'd take a lot of work. The old tubular track. A lot of canning. These shelves, specifically the top shelf, banging my head, is loaded with canned items. I forget what that call, that's called. Um, like pickling them. I think it's called pickling the food or the vegetables. And this is just Mount Mason Jug Mar. Silly name, but that's what it primarily is all Mason jugs, Mason jars, I should say. Mount Mason Jar Moor. Some wine barrels or wine jugs in the back. And I'm not going any further. It's not really worth going any further. It's a lot of glass. I don't want to puncture, <clears throat> excuse me, anything. And pretty good sized water heater right here as well. So that was a look at the basement. That means we have to head up to the top floor, second floor. Multiple rooms up there. And then we have the attic. Well, some things have changed around up here. This is not how I remember seeing it. Yeah, there's some stuff thrown around up here. Someone was up here. Anyone up here? Doubt there is, but just wanted to be safe. Yeah, so these were these bed frames or headboard areas were making like a temporary obstacle or blockage up here. There's a small chance they could have fell on their own, but I think someone may have been up here. Well, we have multiple rooms. That room is Mount Crapmore. That's the worst room out of the whole house. And just to show you too, those lines right there, that's from their hands holding onto the wall as you're navigating down this obstacle course. But the first room we're gonna check out here is kind of like a toy room. And this is where you could maybe help decipher if or I should say whose children were here, whether it was the homeowner's kids, grandkids, foster kids, maybe no kids at all. Maybe they just collected toys. Good thing is it's warmer up here than it is downstairs. I remember this Super Mario 64 camera. There's definitely no film in that. But as far as a Nintendo collectible, Kind of cool. Super scan television. So there's just boxes and boxes of different toys. Tic Tac Toe. A lot of it's younger toys. I should say toys for younger children. My mind just kind of scattered with how much I'm taking in. It's almost like 
too much. You don't know where to look. There we are. And speaking of Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, board game. Super Spirograph, Kenner's. That's for, <coughs> excuse me, hair curlers, I believe. Some toy jewelry hanging there, or beads, like decorations. There is a plastic dollhouse there, pink on the left hand side. This is the bed frame. Floral wallpaper. I love Myrtle Beach piggy bank. We saw the Walkman's downstairs and then we got the Discman up here. Or Rytron, MP3, CD, RW, audio, playback. Plastic tub, almost like a tackle box. And it's like a jewelry box. Like a type of Fisher Place, Fisher Price flashlight. Motorcycle. Drawers do not want to open. Sandals. I guess this was a desk. Yeah, like a sitting desk. And little tiny drawers over there. Wardrobe closet. Another closet. Really small room. But I think room number one on the second floor is complete. Just finished that room. We're gonna continue on the right hand side, circle around and come back because our attic access is in this room. And straight ahead is the worst bathroom I've ever seen. And I will give you fair warning when I'm gonna show that because it is gross and nasty. I know not everyone wants to see it. So I will be respectful. Just like I did in the first video, I will put a disclaimer or let you know verbally we're heading in there. If you don't want to look, turn away, but that's coming up. Stepping on glass, plastic Easter eggs. Kiss Destroyer album. And it's still in there. Oh, look at that. Alarm clock. Cosmo time. Looks like a little TV console set, doesn't it? And this is a... Uh, what kind of hat is that? It's got a keystone on it. Kramer Brothers, Scranton. Is that like a military hat or a soldier's hat? So this is the famous Mount Cratmore that I dubbed. And last time I was here, I did crawl up and over and inside of this room. Uh, I guess since we're here, when in Rome or when in a hoarder house, explored as much as possible. So let's head back inside there. I do need to be a bit more careful because the camera I'm using is more fragile than my action camera. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, get up in there somewhere, and then we'll pick up from there. Well, I'm in the room. I'm literally on top of Mount Cratmore. Don't know what I'm on top of. There's bags, boxes, suitcases, a little bit of everything, but there's no way I'll ever see the bottom. But let's see what we could take in 
from this vantage point. Looking off in the distance there, oh, that hurt. There is a small 45 record player right there, sitting on top of a crock pot box. Some coffee cans, tins, numerous boxes. It's a piece of furniture right here. United States map puzzle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Human brain with half skull. That's kind of cool. Lab display size. Human brain to build, study, and display. It's a metal fan right here. Can't really make out much else. But I, I am uh, literally feet above the floor. That's the top of the doorway right there. That's where my feet are, so that's how high I am. And basically sitting on my butt on top of this crap. So let's get back outside and continue. Don't follow me. There's fur in here too. Watch your head coming out. Ugh. I don't enjoy going in that room, but I do it for my curiosity and for yours. Back on the hallway here, there is these strings strung up, and I believe that is for drying clothes. They probably washed them by hand and hung them up here to dry. Remember there's some musical instruments as well. There's an amplifier right there, amplifier speaker. There is more toys up here too in other parts. Acoustic guitar. I'm gonna bypass the bathroom. And this is, <clears throat> excuse me, scratchy throw it up here. Possibly a master bedroom, at least larger than the first one. Electric guitar right there. Maybe no one's been up here. Maybe that stuff fell on its own because everything does look pretty much the same. Nothing looks out of place in what I remember. There's you know, costume jewelry, cassettes, little music box. See if it still works. Still works. It's really nice. Leather craft workshop. Customizing leather pieces, wallets and stuff. January 1972 calendar right there. That's the same year as Hurricane Agnes. Little tiny portable television up there. Garments. Special edition. Easter Fun Barbie. $10.99 was the sticker price. Still in the box. What is this? Fisher Price. Don't know what that is. Shows a sun in a cloud. I don't know what that is. Some type of children's toy. Don Coleman. This room's complete, which means this is your warning right now. I'm going to enter into the bathroom. I'm going to show you as much as I can for as brief as possible because it is truly nasty and disgusting. 
I don't want to stay in there longer than I have to, but it's something that is worth documenting just to show how these people did live, at least in their later years when they were here. I will let you know once that bathroom scene is concluded, if you do want to pass that and you can pick up after that. And here we are into the bathroom and starting off with some buckets. And that's not dirt, that is crap that's decomposed. They were storing or collecting their crap in these buckets. And I'm guessing maybe using it outside for fertilizer, that's the best guess scenario. But these buckets never made it out there. These are partially full of crap. And I'm, oh, it's just as bad as I remember, even worse. That is all dirty tissues and women's pads. Oh, the toilet is full of crap. It looks like it's broken too. The tub, as I mentioned, they haven't showered or taken a bath, taken a bath in years when they were here. It's just more storage. It's all it is. Light fixture right here. Cornflakes, it says above the window. Old Spice aftershave. Uh, some more compresses. First aid. Aqua Velva. And inside, even more. Old Spice. Vix shampoo bottles, deodorant, razors. But yes, this is crap. More in a fertilizer state. Truly the most disgusting, horrific bathroom I've ever seen, mainly due to all the dirty tissues and pads, women's pads, which, you know, they have obviously blood on them. Tissues have the crap on them. I can't show or take any more of this. Uh, yeah, we're done in the bathroom. Okay, bathroom is complete. We won't show that anymore. And uh, let's continue. I actually came really close to dry heating in there. That was really bad. This is the room, which is above the TV room downstairs. And... Obviously we won't be going in it past this spot. Daylight is coming through. The roof does have a significant hole in it on the front portion here. Everything is falling in on itself. There's more toys in here. Power Rangers play set. More buckets. Lots of buckets. Yeah, these are um, full. These buckets are full, I think, of crap. So they were just storing it up here instead of doing anything with it. God, these conditions are just horrific. All right, that room, I should say this room is pretty much done. Literally and figuratively, it's done. The adjoining room has some more toys, a lot more toys. Numerous Power Ranger play figures, motorcycle, car, little tiny figurines. Some Disney characters in there. Princess Jasmine, I see. Cabbage Patch, little figure. It actually smells like a skunk up here. That's not good. There better not be a skunk in this house. Hopefully it's coming from outside. If I didn't smell it outside before. There's even more toys right here. Fire truck. These are like die cast, I think. Some of these. Definitely wasn't used as a bedroom, just for storage. But small in size. Back through the hallway. 
That was a fishing pole right there I didn't see before. And a violin. Here's the old school camera I remember last time. Siconic Zoom 8. I don't even know what kind of film that would take. This is the smallest room of them all. It's about the size of the bathroom, but it's also loaded. And around the corner there is where we're gonna find the attic steps. And I'm just, don't even know what I'm stepping on. Those are all records. Jim, the bars, how great thou art. Singer button holder, more old spice drum. I think my flashlight might be dying. More wardrobe stuff. Old coats. Yeah, let me switch to my light panel and we'll continue. All right, around this corner is the steps to the attic which <laughs> yeah, is a feat in itself. Just making sure there's no animals up here. It's significantly warmer up here. I'm not gonna stay up here too long. I will start sweating. I thought I could walk out there, but yeah, I'm not walking out there. There's no solid floor. There's just random pieces of wood over the joists. But this is the attic. There's the big opening over there where the water is coming through. What is that, swamp thing or a creature from the Black Lagoon? I don't know. It's like maybe the Philadelphia Phillies mascot, but I don't think it is. Minnie Mouse. Radio Shack, show and learn. Any date on that? Not that I could see, but Radio Shack, don't even think they're in business anymore. Right here is a type of game with some pockets in the corner, some netted pockets. And I remember last time, and obviously people know better than I do when it comes to arcade systems, gaming systems, that this box, Atari 7800, is not what's inside of it. So that is a different gaming system than what is in what's supposed to be in there. But those are those same controllers, though, that we saw downstairs, those racing controllers with the knobs on them. So that goes to this particular gaming system. Oh, yeah, it's just... Everything just piled right here. They didn't even bother going any further out in later years because everything's just blocked up here. But initially, at some point, they did get stuff further in the back. But they didn't bother going back there in later years. I don't think there's anything else here worth seeing or showing. There's a Cabbage Patch doll right there, I think. That is pretty much it for the attic. Oh, what is this? Horn Magic. I just had the little crap scared out of me. So <laughs> I'm down here in the main floor, first floor, getting some pictures before I head outside. And I was over there, actually I'll bring you over. I was over where the cabinet was where we found all those games where the door fell off. And I knew I was stepping on things. All of a sudden I heard a voice and something still has battery power was saying something about a shopping cart. Let me see if I could find it and see if we could make it do it again. 
but I was not expecting that. I didn't think anything in this house would still have battery power or life still, but that gave me a good scare. Yeah, so I was right over here getting pictures of that. What the hell was doing it? Welcome to Sorry Card Revenge. Yeah. Come on, tap the noggin when you're ready to play. This thing still has battery power. Uh, the player with the next birthday goes first. Forget the party. And get started. How lucky can you get? Play a card, any card. <laughs> yeah, I bumped into that on the floor. It gave me a really good scare. You know what? Since we're here, we might as well try and clean up a little bit. Let's see if we can plug the vacuum in. Do a little house cleaning. Where's the switch? Okay, here it is. It's talking to me again. That's better. Thing is still talking. Closing the door. And there's a brief look at that little outdoor storage room. There's another washing machine right here. I think another dryer over there in the corner. Little cat carrier or dog pet carrier, I should say. We are obviously back outside, and I think we did a really good job of documenting the details of the possessions left behind both trash, maybe some treasures, and I think it definitely told more of a story. I will share my thoughts at the outro of the video as to what I think now based on what I've seen, but we're not done yet. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to and nothing bad happened. And we got gorgeous sunny skies out here. So let's explore around a bit of the property here. I wanna show you the exterior doors that go into the basement, give you a few more shots of the house. And then we're gonna check out more of the contents on the property. I'm gonna really focus on the upper area where there's that dugout plastic pit of plastic material that they're going to try to bury and some other items up there like the bowling bowling ball cleaning machine so this portion here is going to be all exterior shots and contents on the property I'm sure many of you remember this from last time if you come here any other time besides the winter most of this stuff won't be visible and it'd be very hard to get into the house because this is all that bamboo material Yeah, they're calling for rain showers later today. It doesn't seem like it. It's a gorgeous day out. Downstairs, though, it's definitely colder. A little bit of a chill. Up in the attic, I was starting to sweat. So right now, it's a bit of a breeze. And it's uh, probably in the middle 50s. Oh, in case you're curious what my flashlight was, I was using my uh, Through Night Archer Mini. nice little compact flashlight worked out pretty good until it started dying at the end and I also have my LED light panel which I use for my video work with my uh, other cameras bowling alley chairs seats
more of them right here. You can see the curved seating as if it was sitting around like the uh, console that keeps the score or around uh, maybe the ball return. There's a couple of them here. These are the doors that we saw on the inside coming down the steps into the basement. So if they wanted to bring something large inside, they'd have to open this up both on the inside and outside here and have sufficient room to fit like the furnace, the oil tanks, I guess, uh, the washer and dryer, anything large that won't fit down the actual stairs would have to go in through here or through some of the windows. Some are open, some are boarded up. Power meter is removed, obviously. And it has that siding is like the roofing material. I don't know the proper name of it, but that's what it always reminds me of. It's like that patch roofing material, tar paper. All right, here is a collapsed, fallen down shed. Nothing really important, just a few more outdoor toys. And uh, let's go to the other side now where there's a few more things over there. On the opposite side of the house now, there's random piles of stuff. Some of it's collapsed structures, some of it's just heaping piles of metal and wood. A little play slide here. Now there is a pile of plastics there, but that's not what I was referring to. That's just one of them that's here. There's another lawnmower, I know it's a spreader over there. There's a lawnmower here, exercise bike. It's just a mishmash of things. I guess whatever they thought had value of sorts, whether it was scrap or sentimental, but there is almost a bit of everything here. There's another collapse structure up there, which I don't know if it was collapsed last time. I thought maybe it was like a little uh, chicken house or a rabbit shed. But there's also a frame up there of a vehicle. And I think someone said maybe it was from a Model A. Hopefully I can still get access to that. I'll give you some more visuals of that as well. And here's a quick look at the front of the house. Covered porch is barely hanging on. There is a glider on the porch. Some other things. The steps are still there, but I wouldn't stand on the porch. It's barely hanging on. And the front door is pretty much barricaded anyway, so the only way to get in is through the back. I think the, yep, yeah, it's here. I know it's hard to see, but this is what's here. It's a rolling chassis. Not sure if those wheels or tires help identify it at all. I wish I could show you more, but it is really being reclaimed by nature. And that definitely collapsed more than I remember from last time. So that's how these places go. No upkeep. The weather just kind of gets a hold of it. Slowly but surely, they don't last or survive in the elements. And this is what's just to come of it. Even the house, if nobody was to ever do anything with this, years to come, it's gonna eventually start collapsing in on itself. Especially since there's that hole in the roof and there's already significant water getting into the second and first floor. Here we are at the far back of the property. There's more stuff up here too. I think this is a fridge or freezer. Maybe a, a few of them. Maybe an oven of sorts. Pedestal sink, I remember from last time. Still has the faucets on it. And the bowling ball cleaning machine. Which this has been uh, yeah, altered a bit or something happened with it. I remember I said soup and water saver. It's soap and water saver. Small, medium, regular. And there's the glass that would have went over it. 
That's a bowling ball cleaning machine or the shell of it. Tin cans, tires. And here's the plastics, which is quite disturbing to see. It's an open pit. Now all these bottles are just tossed in here and I don't know if they had plans to cover it up because they're not going to disintegrate. They're just going to sit there as plastic. And a lot of them are these older two liter bottles with the black bottoms on them, like RC Cola and whatever else at the time, but a lot of older plastics here. But they drank a heck of a lot of soda. Believe it or not, that is shoes right there covered in some nature's carpet. You see a toilet, some more appliances, just random little piles. This is, yeah, another fridge, I guess. It's like the inside drum of a washing machine right there. So here's what I've gathered based on all the contents that I've seen today and for my both visits here, I come up with some thoughts and opinions about the people who did live here. I still think that someone, and I'm gonna say probably the male or the man in the house, either worked for or owned a bowling alley. There's just too many things related to the bowling alleys here. The bowling ball cleaning machine, there was pins outside on the porch, I believe. There's the multiple bowling alley seats, stickers, signs, advertisements. Too many things pointing to the bowling alley itself that someone had some type of involvement. Maybe part owner, maybe a repairman, who knows. I do think a couple did live here, both the man and the woman. There's plenty of female items, garments, jewelry, and I think children did reside here. I think that when the children were born, they lived here. And a lot of those toys are dating to you know a younger period. Most of the toys don't go past the 90s, as far as I know. And I think the children either got removed from the house when people became aware of the living conditions, or they just grew up to an age old enough to move out on their own, didn't want to come back. I do think there's at least a boy and a girl for children because there's both boys and girl, girls toys. Foster children, I don't think would be the case because those homes have to be inspected and that didn't happen overnight. That's been built up for a long, long time. I also think that one of the adults had some health problems because we've seen the, I guess you want to call it potty chair down in the basement, some other things just related to uh, you know, medications, not medications, but um, medical stuff, just things pointing in that direction that someone was having some issues, needed some help, was maybe not in their best ailment in their later years. And the last thing is that definitely had no running water, no oil for the heat. So their only heat source was portable heat devices and they had electricity most likely. They just hoarded gallons of water jugs and it just, it, I have no way to describe it other than it's literally one of the most extreme cases of hoarding I've ever come across and by far the worst bathroom conditions I could ever conceive of. The built up of dirty tissues and women's pads, there's no word to describe it, it's just downright nasty. Aside from that, as far as collections go, obviously he was scrapping stuff. 
I guess you could say recycling, but not in the proper way. You know, they have plastics, tins, metals, tires, but they're just sitting here on the property. They're not becoming of anything. So it's not really being recycled as they should at a facility. As I stated in the past video, if anyone does buy this property, they're gonna have a lot to clean up. It's gonna cost a lot of money to clean up the entire property. The house I think is beyond saving at this point. Not saying it can't be saved, but I think it costs more money to save it than it would to just be level it, start from scratch. It is a big piece of property. It is wooded, but as you can hear, it is near busy roadways. There is highways not too far from here. I want to hear though what you guys think. I asked you for your help. I asked you how you could contribute to this video. And based on everything I showed you, which was the most I can within a realistic amount of time, I want to hear your thoughts on the people who lived here, what you think their hobbies were or interests, what their professions were, if they had children, any health ailments, what you think of the conditions of the property itself. See if you have similar thoughts to what I shared. And again, my thoughts are just mine of my own, my own opinion. I don't speak for anyone else. I could be completely off on everything, but I'm just going with what I saw. That's my gut instinct. And I'm happy that I was able to return approximately one year later to document in more greater detail the contents of the shockingly indescribable hoarder house. Anyways, I greatly appreciate you coming along. If you're still watching to this point, do me a favor, 
drop down a blue heart in the comments. And to see more videos just like this, including my first visit, check the description down below. Otherwise, thank you so very much once again. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.